Hello and welcome back to Fring ERP. My name is Haley and today we are going to be covering part two of purchase order entry. If you missed out on part one, you can find that video linked in the cards now or in the description box below. For anyone new to Profit 21 or purchase order entry, if you haven't watched part one, I highly recommend it because we go over all of the PO entry basics. In part two, we are going to be covering more useful tabs in PO entry. Primarily, I'm going to discuss Schedule and Commitment Schedule. I'll also cover other tabs such as Extended Info and Purchase History. First, we'll quickly go over Pricing. The Pricing tab shows the method of the supplier you are purchasing material from. At the top of the tab, you will see the Company ID and the Supplier ID. Below those two is the Pricing method. If the supplier pricing method is multiplier, the source price and multiplier used to calculate the pricing are shown below pricing method. If it's set to libraries, the assigned libraries are listed below the pricing method field. As a quick tip, if multiple currencies are enabled, the pricing reflects the supplier's currency. The biggest topics I want to discuss with you is schedule and commitment schedule. The Schedule tab is used to set up a default release schedule for an order. You'll want to set up a default if you're entering multiple items with the same or similar schedules on the same order. First, you'll select your release by. You can choose between specific date or rule. If you pick specific date, make sure to choose a release date. You also have to decide whether to round the quantity to either the first release or last release. If you set your release by to rule, enter the date when the releases are going to begin in the first release date field, then enter the total number of releases. Be sure to specify how often the releases are in the frequency field. The system automatically calculates the exact release dates. Click the apply checkbox for each item you want to add a release schedule. Clicking Apply All automatically applies the release schedule to all of the line items after the line item selected when you press the button. Purchase orders that are on a release schedule are automatically excluded from lead time. Next, we'll go over the Commitment Schedule tab. This tab is used so that you can view an item's net stock, where it's allocated, when it's allocated, how much is due in, and when it's expected. The tab also gives lead time information on out-of-stock items so that you can give your customers a delivery estimate before you process an order. Some of the fields include item ID, item description, the location ID, quantity available, net stock, lead time source, and lead time. The columns include expected slash release date, which is the date an item is expected or when it will be released, transaction number, transaction type, release quantity, allocated quantity, due in quantity, which contains the quantity to be received from a PO for an item, net stock, and promise date. Next we have extended info. This tab shows all of the details for the item highlighted on the Items tab. The Price tab shows you the pricing calculations that determine the unit price for the item that is highlighted on the Items tab. Finally, we have Purchase History. This tab shows you how often you purchase something, how much you purchased, and why you purchased it. Thank you so much for watching today's video on Part 2 of Purchase Order Entry. If there's any part you would like to rewatch, you can find the timestamps in the description box. Also, if you have any questions, be sure to leave us a comment. Before you go, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We post new videos every Tuesday. And leave a like on the video if you found it helpful. Also, make sure to check out our blog, Freeing ERP, and social media, which you can find linked on screen and down below. See you in our next video.